So sometimes a seemingly simple piece of paper uh, tells a deceptively complex story, and that is the case with this document. We're looking at an identity card, a French identity card, for a woman by the name of Irene Siebert, which identifies her in early 1940s, so this is German-occupied France, as a Christian woman. But in fact, this was a disguise. It was a disguise for a German Jewish woman who is hiding in plain sight. She's assumed this identity as a form of protection because if she is living and carrying around an ID card that says she's not Jewish, she is safer. In fact, her name was Irma Simon, and she was actually a young woman from Germany, um, a fashion designer, uh, someone talented at sewing, and she and her family had fled to France uh, earlier, trying to escape from Nazi persecution. This piece of paper protected Irma for a number of years as Jews all over France and all over Paris were being deported to concentration camps and then onward to killing centers in the East. It shows uh, how many people it could take to help someone survive like this, though, because there had to be some kind of master forger. There were many networks of underground resistors like this in France, in the Netherlands, in Belgium, who would supply these kind of life-saving documents, forge the necessary stamps, forge the um, signatures of people who were needed, and give people this paper protection. So in the summer of 1939, Irma and her parents had fled Germany for France, where they hoped they would be safer. And in fact, they were for some time until the spring of 1940, when Germany invaded France. Uh, they were able to live there um, in very difficult conditions, but still in comparative safety for the next two years. And at that point, Irma could have fled again, but her parents were too old, they were in poor health, and she was not willing to abandon them. And so in the summer of 1942, Irma was part of massive roundups that took place in Paris. And she was taken first to a transit camp called Drancy, and then eventually deported to Auschwitz, uh, where she was gassed to death. Her parents actually, in a sort of ironic twist, uh, were let to remain in their apartment. They were old and infirm and someone took pity on them. And so their daughter, who stayed to protect them, who would not abandon them, she lost her life, but they did not. So it's a really tragic story. But this photo still shows the, the courage, the bravery, and the trust that networks of resistors like this uh, used to put together life-saving papers. And in many cases, they did work.